Ladies and gentlemen, I bet you did not know this, but it is in fact opposite day. I've got my team full of Pokemon that do the opposite of what Game Freak designed. For example, we're running with a choice band physical attacking Gengar. So we are going to do our best to see if we can catch him off guard while also just testing out to see if these Pokemon can have any power using the absolute stat they were not designed to use. So. As always, if you are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button and also smash that like button. I'm going to set a goal of 2,000 if we could possibly hit that. That would be crazy. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is going to end up leading off with the Iron Valiant. Very scary Pokemon, very chrome Pokemon, looking like it's straight out of that one future episode from SpongeBob. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, I had lead off with the Gyarados as this is not really the matchup I'm fishing for. So what I'm going to do is switch directly into Gengar. I'm thinking... I can definitely take an attack from this thing, and then I can actually hit it pretty hard in return with a poison jab, and maybe just see if we can get uh, a little physical attack in Gengar to do some stuff. So, they actually just end up going for the Spirit Break, and that is ideal, because Gengar is able to take that nicely. Does drop my special attack. Now, ordinarily, as a Gengar, you're thinking, damn, not my special attack, but this Gengar throws nothing but hands, baby. Actually, I guess tongue. As I go for the poison jab, physical attack with the Choice Band is going to be able to take care of the Valiant, and that's a huge Pokemon out of the way. And uh, Gengar is doing exactly what he's designed to do. So, now they get a free switch, and they're going to go into the Palafin. Of course, it's just regular-ass Dolphin Palafin at the moment, as they have to kind of switch out or go for a flip turn, as they do actually end up going right for the switch, and that's going to bring out Mimikyu. So the next time that Palafin comes in, it is going to be much scarier, and I'm going to have to deal with that. But for now, we've got ourselves a little Mimikyu action, and I decided to switch into Gyarados on the Palafin. Of course, this is a special attack in Gyarados, and this is actually one of my favorite sets to run on Gyarados lately. I swear to god, the coverage is hilarious on this thing. What, for whatever reason, Gen 1 was a wild time. They gave Gyarados some weird shit. But, uh, after the Intimidate, I'm thinking, you know, I'm actually just going to end up switching out. I want to conserve the Gyarados. It's a great answer to their Palafin. And honestly, I would like to just get two Intimidates in a row. This Mimikyu is about scared as shit at this point. Second Intim Intimidate does come in. If they decide the Swords Dance, that's fine. Uh, but they actually end up going right for the Trick. And... That is going to switch around the old items. It's going to end up giving me a choice scarf as they take my life orb. And I'm honestly, I'm kind of fine with that. Scarf Landorus is not too bad. Plus, I can just throw some sand in this thing's eyes, give him a little pocket sand. I go for that Sand Seer Storm, and that is going to break this thing's disguise. So, the annoying part about Mimikyu is that it basically gets a free Swords Dance up. That's mainly why I decided to come into uh, the, the Double Intimidate. But this one actually ends up going for the Trick Room, and now... Me being Choice Scarfed, I'm fast as hell, and the Trick Room is not going to be kind to me here, as they actually end up going for the Destiny Bond. So, knowing that they're going to go first here, they try to take me down with them, and Landorus pulls out the most clutch miss of all time, <laughs> and that is actually pretty damn amazing. Sandster Storm does have shit accuracy, but uh, the miss on that turn was kind of hilarious, I'm not going to lie. So, I realize I'm probably just going to get Destiny Bonded again, and I'm going to get my ass on out of here, and I decide to go into Clefable, because I'm also thinking... Clefable is about thick as store-bought gravy, and I actually am going to be slower than this Mimikyu, so under Trick Room, I'm actually in a great spot. So, they end up going for the Shadow Claw here, as I'm thinking now's a good time to go for the Terra and hit him with a Meteor Mash. I straight up just throw a Meteor at this thing's face. The last thing anybody expects coming from a Clefable uh, is likely going to be the Terra Steel uh, paired with the Meteor Mash for the stab. So, I put the Axe on my head, much more threatening, and the Meteor Mash is just going to finish off the Mimikyu and uh, that is hilarious because I'm able to go first, taking advantage of their trick room, and uh, that is amazing. We also, what is more amazing is I actually even get the attack boost from the Meteor Mash. So I'm chilling in a pretty good spot here, with Fable out here doing its thing, as in comes the Palafin. So this thing is, of course, zero to hero. His stats are absolutely insane now, and Clefable doesn't really have any business staying in here and going for another Meteor Mash. So I have to make a play, and I'm thinking they probably go for some type of fighting move here and I can just bring in Gengar, who should then be able to outspeed and try to make a play. So, I switch out the Clefable for his direct shadow, and in comes the Gengar, as they're actually going to end up going for a Terra themselves, and I'm thinking, please do not go for a water move here. That would be not ideal. They actually end up going for the Terra water, and uh, I'm thinking, damn, this thing... The power of a Terra-boosted Palafin is honestly unfair. So, they get that water Terra off, and they actually do end up going for the Drain Punch to take out the Clefable, and we absolutely love to see it, as the Twisted Dimensions do return to normal, and it is time to make a Focus Punch read. I know they have the normal type in the slacking in the back. I'm going to click the Focus Punch, hoping and praying that they do go into it, and to my surprise, they do actually end up bringing in the slacking. So, this thing comes in, pulling the lint out of his belly button, as I do go for that Focus Punch, tighten up that Focus, and then the next turn, we are able to connect. 
Choice banded tongue punch to the fart box does a massive amount of damage, and slacking is like, what the hell just happened to me? Uh, of course, it's extremely satisfying to get a focus punch off there, but I cannot stay in here because I am choice banded. Uh, so I decide to switch back into Gyarados here, who can get an Intimidate and likely take care of the slacking now that I've gotten that extreme chip damage. So, um, choice. I, I really wish I would have gone for the Terra fighting if I didn't commit the Terra already on the Clefable. Uh, the Terra fighting would have been enough to like take care of the slacking, but overall I'm just happy to have been able to pull off a Focus Punch. So the slacking does stay in here, being at this amount of health, they decide to just let it go down to a Thunderbolt. They're probably also seeing Gyarados with Thunderbolt thinking, what the fuck, what is this guy doing? And that is exactly what we are looking for. So, uh, now they get a free switch and they decide to go into Baxcalibur. This is an extremely scary Pokemon as well. And I am a Gyarados who is stuck into Thunderbolt. So, not an ideal situation here as I am going to end up switching out. And I do have Heatran who is relatively fit to handle this thing. Uh, depending on what type of moveset this thing is. So, I bring in the Heatran and they actually reveal the Freeze Dry. Which is kind of an insane, insane Baxcalibur with the... The freeze dry. I guess it works out really well against uh, water matchups, but uh, of course Heatran just kind of laughs that shit off and Lava Frog is basically just gonna go ahead and I actually mean to click Iron Head and accidentally click Earthquake, but uh, they end up going for the crunch. I'm really, I honestly went into Heatran thinking that they were gonna have uh, the Earthquake and it was kind of a death fodder switch in, but seeing that they go for the crunch, that reveals that this thing is actually not gonna have the coverage with the Earthquake and now I can actually click the right move here and go for the Iron Head as He's just taking slowly some slow bites out of the out of the Heatran, but uh, physical attacking Heatran is not quite enough to be able to knock it out with the Iron Head. But that should mostly be fine. I'm willing to make the trade-off uh, Heatran for the Backscalibur. This thing being a setup set was kind of my worst fear. Uh, but at this point, I'm gonna end up going for the Stealth Rock. I figure I can take another Crunch, get my Stealth Rock up, and then get a nice little Revenge switch in after that. The Stealth Rock is just gonna be important for the late game, so. I figure I do have the Gengar who can just outspeed the Baxcalibur regardless, and I'm able to get those rocks up for, for free. We always take that free real estate, baby. Another Crunch is going to take care of the Heatran, but uh, I kind of did my job at this point, and now I can go into the absolute speedy boy who is the Gengar. Now, this Gengar is running Poltergeist because it's actually like finally we get a good physical ghost move that has cut like a lot of access, and I'm going to take advantage of that because it's just kind of a fun move. Choice Banded Gengar using the Poltergeist obviously is going to be enough to just absolutely destroy this dude. And down goes the Baxcalibur. Very scary Pokemon out of the way and Gengar is out here taking names with his, with his tongue, I guess. Anyway, they get a free switch and they're going to end up going into the Garchomp, who is another very scary Pokemon. And I know that I cannot knock this thing out uh, at the health that it's at. So we know that an Earthquake is coming and I'm just going to end up switching back into the greatest Gyarados that has ever lived who is not only going to intimidate but also uh, be immune to the Earthquake here. Plus, I've got a little little bit of coverage under my sleeve here. So they do go for that Earthquake, we get the prediction correct and at this point I can essentially just go for that Ice Beam. They're kind of running out of options. As their last Pokemon in the back is going to be that Palafin, it's worth it for me to just click the Ice Beam here as the Garchomp does just stay in and take it, potentially over predicting with the Thunderbolt would have been a bad play. But now their final Pokemon is their Terrastalized Hero Ass Superman Dolphin. And again, this thing hits extremely hard pretty much everything on my team. But I'm going to end up going into the Gengar here. The reason is, even if I just get knocked out here, I can just switch back in Gyarados, get another Intimidate, and then finish it off with a Thunderbolt. However, G Gengar does come in on an Ice Punch and we're actually able to barely just live that. Um, which is going to allow me to think I can, hey, get a Poltergeist off once again. The accuracy is 90, but we don't give a shit. But it's actually a Choice Scarf Palafin. And damn it, Gengar does go down, unfortunately. Um, but that's kind of what I expected anyway. As uh, I can just go back into the Gyarados here. And essentially just show off, again, the coverage that Gyarados gets. How does this thing summon the power of electricity? He's literally four times a week to it. The world may never know. Gen 1 was a, a wild time. But... Uh, they just have to go for that Ice Punch, and you know, after Intimidate, of course, Bulky House Gyarados takes that, and a Thunderbolt, well, more like two Thunderbolts. Listen, I'm still a special attacking Gyarados. We don't have the crazy amount of power that you would like, but it is fine, because we just take another Ice Punch, and then we just shock him one last time, and that is going to be the end of the match. So, I had fun with that one. This team is always just fun to use to see if I can get it to work. And yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I will see you next time. Peace out.